Good afternoon, everyone. This is the Global Cooling Rundown. For August snow in Colorado, more Arctic sea ice than 1971, Al Gore's net worth skyrockets from 2 million to 300 million based on global warming. And with the news media focused on record heat across Central Europe, they left out below normal temperatures in Iceland, Sweden, Norway, and also the inconvenient below normal temperatures across North Africa. Heat wave across Europe, it's in the media, but they forget the periphery areas that are below normal temperatures. And as these hot and cold air masses mix together, 270,000 lightning strikes. This heat wave is supposed to be the heat wave that beats all heat waves. Let's look at the top 10 European heat waves since 1950. Even taking a look at the heat waves of 2003, 2006, Paris 104 Fahrenheit. And then we look at this heat wave temperature map, Paris not even anywhere near 104 degrees. And it follows as well the European heat wave of 2007. They were registering 113 degrees and none of those temperatures on the map even get close to that. But what is happening in these last couple of weeks is amazing supercell formation over areas that don't generally get tornadoes or supercells. This is the size of hail coming down. And if it's smaller hail, these are Italian beaches. Get ready for an unseasonably chilly August. Weather Channel assured us it was going to be above average temperatures and much above. But wait, the next six to 10 day forecast coming out Extreme below normal temperatures across the majority of the United States. Cold front reaching all the way from the Arctic down into the United States. Funny though, this is the exact same days that the forecast for below normal temperatures was released. New York Times putting out a rah-rah IPCC go-go global warming piece. Because of the European heat wave of 2003, it just verifies that man-made global warming is true. Hey, New York Times, why don't you come up to 2017, look at the effects of our sun going into a grand solar minimum and how it affects our atmosphere and our magnetosphere and the increasing cosmic rays and then do a different piece. Why don't I write an opinion piece for you? Then we can lay all the facts on the table. Temperature map here, August 9th. A lot of blue on there and that really light blue, that's into the 30 degree Fahrenheit range. Just snowed in Colorado as well. Jumping on to the 11th, still down into the 30, 40 Fahrenheit range all the way from Idaho down into the Four Corners area. And look across the Midwest, all the way up into the New England states. Those are 15 to 20 degree below normal temperatures. And then it flips possibly, but this is 15 days out after the 24th. And when we get into the harvest season, we're going to get something more like springtime where you have these cold and these hot air masses colliding together. Farmers are probably going to have to use dehydrators this year to add to the cost of getting that grain to market because there'll be unusual rains, unusual snows that are going to add to the cost of production and the grain harvest is going to come well below what was forecast anyway. So this sort of gets into its own feedback loop and the agricultural production chain. And a simple way to phrase all that is food prices going up significantly at the end of the year. There's definitely a correlation between increased volcanic activity during these grand solar minimums, both entering and exiting. Interesting how in Alaska, this type of eruption just occurred. Also the Helheim Glacier in Greenland, suddenly steam vents breaking through the ice cap. Yes, there's volcanoes up there. They're even using these volcanic rock demarcation areas in oil exploration. Iceland about to experience another volcanic eruption if the earthquakes continue. And we all remember in 2010 how much air traffic was affected. And if there is another large eruption, just think of this one Pinatubo volcano dropping Earth's temperatures. And with this many erupting volcanoes at the same time on our planet, you really need to ask yourself how much ash is going into the atmosphere. And we are absolutely going to experience something of either the Dalton or the Monitor Minimum type of grand solar minimum starting right now. So you can expect volcanic activity increasing. And look, it's increasing. There's a direct correlation. 
Now let's talk about the food price rise timeline and how this cryptocurrency is going to replace our current economic system as food prices get so expensive that the rest of the economy crashes. And since the fiat currencies of the world will have no confidence behind them, we'll need to move to a different system, specifically blockchain to buy, sell, and trade on a global level or international because nobody will trust letters of credit. Probably in around 2018 at the end or 2019, you'll start to see some real effects into the global economy.